Hello! Today in your art studio, I'm taking you to my art studio. Two summers ago, I was babysitting for these children who were so lovely and just loved making fairy houses when we were outside. So on a rainy day, I thought, hmm, I have a whole bunch of nature supplies in my art studio. Why don't we go in there and use those to make indoor versions of fairy houses? So this is mine, two years later, because, well, it took me a long time to get back to it. There's been a lot going on, and sometimes that's the way it is with art. It also gave me a bit of a fresh perspective for some things that I could do um, with this fairy house. So my intention is for my child to play with this as if it were a dollhouse, except it's made with natural materials and it's homemade and handmade. And she also got to have some input on what went where and why. So here is a tour of the fairy house that's two years in the making. Okay, so if I step back, you can see that it is two levels. It is made primarily of driftwood, but there are two, well, one and a half. There's this big round that is cut by a chainsaw about two inches thick at the bottom. And then there's another one for the second floor here. That one actually broke in half naturally. So then I just sanded it and figured it would be a good second floor that was sort of a loft. So at the bottom floor, and this does spin, but the only reason is because I put it on one of these wheels that's made for potters um, to work hand building ceramics. So on the bottom floor, there are a few of these little, um, they are sheepskin. So different types of sheepskin wool intended to be rugs. I thought that this little, this is actually a cactus burl that someone had given me from a Seguro cactus, which is from the Southwest. It reminded me of one of those pod chairs. So it's here, it's a pod chair for a little fairy or gnome. These are intended to be stairs. It's all driftwood which have great texture, just they come out of the ocean with beautiful textures. With a little ramp up to the second floor. And then this piece of driftwood here kind of creates its own room from the inside and a portal or window from the outside. From inside. And then up in the ceiling on the second floor, I reused some copper foil that I had left over and I hung a whole bunch of these, I think originally they were intended to be necklaces or ornaments for Christmas tree? I don't even remember. They've been sitting around a long time, but they look great in here. So they're just hanging on a piece of embroidery thread. And they are glass beads with an acorn cap on top. Over here, there's the top of a quill pen that I think, I feel like I got it at a tag sale, but when I got it home, the ink was gone and the pen was broken. So I ripped the feathers off and figured I could use them for something. Another driftwood window. This here is another cactus burl from a Seguro, I hope I'm saying that right, cactus. For any Harry Potter fans, I have always thought that this piece looks like a wand. This cactus burl is so cool. It, just by itself, it looks like a fairy house. I like this angle though, because it shows the roundness of the copper roof, a view to the inside, and then the cactus burl creates just such a whimsical area. You can just 
find your way in to visit your friend who lives here. And we're back to the front. So down here on the first floor, I have this little welcome sign with beautiful driftwood, a couple of little lizards made from polymer clay. And I think that's about it. Here's a little view from the inside. <laughs> 